So High Point Scientific reached out to me the other day and asked me if I'd be interested in doing a review of Apertura's new armored powered USB hub. And I said, sure. To be honest with you, it was not anything that I ever thought about needing. I've always just used a standard four port USB hub that you would buy for your computer, your laptop, your desktop, just to give me the extra USB ports that I required. Never gave any consideration about protecting those devices that were plugged into that hub. Because those hubs provide no protection at all. So they sent me over the product. I just want to go over some of the specs before we get started. First and most important probably is this device is specifically designed for astrophotographers. It is made out of CNC 6061 anodized aluminum, four millimeters thick, so the case itself is nice and durable. It has six 3.0 USB ports on it, each of them capable of providing up to 2.6 amps at five volts. Anything beyond 2.6, it's supposed to isolate that port, shut the power down, continue to monitor it to see if the issue goes away. At the same time, it's still providing power to your other ports, so it doesn't shut everything down it just shuts the problem port down that has the fault on it for protecting itself protecting everything else that's plugged into it including your computer your camera your rotator filter wheel guide camera whatever you have plugged into it everything would be isolated from any potential issue coming from one of the devices on a port that maybe is pulling too much current or has somehow developed a short again six ports with the provided 12 volt 5 amp power supply that they give you you can concurrently run 10 amps across all six ports so there is short circuit protection so if a cable got somehow how frayed and shorted itself out the unit will detect that there's a short and again cut power off to that usb port on the input power side of things it also protects it from the voltage being too low as well as the voltage being too high there's also reverse polarity protection so if somehow you grabbed a, another power brick that maybe center wasn't positive but the outside of the pin is positive just the opposite that it would be a reverse polarity situation and if you inadvertently plug that into the hub it would detect that and it wouldn't even turn on. Again, getting back to the, it's designed for astrophotography. One of the other really nice features is it's designed to run in extreme temperatures. So from minus four degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. The other thing it's, and this is compatible on Windows, Mac and Linux, no drivers needed. Just plug them in. The standard drivers for a USB hub will be used on whichever operating system you're running this with. We're going to do a quick unboxing of this just to show you what you have. And what I'm not going to do is just go over the spec like I just did and hook it up and say okay look everything works we're gonna test it so we're gonna test the overcurrent we're gonna test uh, the input low voltage and high voltage everything that they're climbing just to make sure so we can actually see this stuff working right otherwise we're just blindly believing that all this protection is built in there everything works and we would never really see it protecting anything unless we did have an issue but I want to run this thing through its paces and and actually be able to physically see that it's doing what they're saying it's supposed to be doing. Now, those are the specs, enough talking about them. Let's get into the testing. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, so inside of the box, we have the hub. On this side, we got the power switch, the power input and the USB connection to our PC. Like I was stating in the beginning, we get six 3.0 USB ports. They put three on each side. On the bottom, our mounting options are standard quarter inch 20, as well as M4 by 0.7, which also comes, they also provide a Cinta style mounting bracket that should fit most of the finder shoes that are on the market. Catch that in the back there, and they give you the two screws with the Allen key to get that taken care of and installed. And on this side, they provide you with the USB cable, which is what they recommend to use to connect the hub to your computer. We have a 12 volt, five amp power supply with a threaded connector. The threaded connector is to be used with the extension if you need more of a length. So when you put the two together, we're almost at about eight feet of length from the hub to the power supply. And then obviously this is just the power cord for the power supply itself. So we're going to set this thing up and we're going to do some testing and see what kind of results we can get with it. All right. So for this first test, I want to test the limiting factors of the USB port. So we know it's five volts. The specifications call it. We can draw up to 2.6 amps out of any one of these individual six ports that we have on the armored hub. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I have a do strap here with a, a controller that with indicators that it's on so we can watch and actually see that the power is running. And then I also have these LED lights that I'm just going to plug into each one of the ports. So I've only got four of them. That's why I have the do strap here as well. So we'll use that for the fifth one. But we'll load these all up. Put one in each of the ports. And again, it's just an indicator so we can see what's going on. Because 
what they're saying is if we draw more than that 2.6 amps, just that port that is overloading will be shut off and monitored. Everything else will still run. So we should still see these lights remain lit as we increase the amperage draw off of the, the test port that we're going to be using. So we'll get each one of these in here, get the dew strap plugged in. And for this test, I'm going to go ahead and use the provided power supply. Um, our next test, when we start testing the under and over voltage on the input side of things, I'll be using my, my desktop power supply to do that. But for this one, we're going to go ahead and use the power supply that came with the unit. So that'll plug into the power input. And then this remaining open port here is the one we're going to use for our test. And what I have here is a USB constant current load tester. It has a course and a fine adjustment for it. So I'll start it all the way down to the zero point on both knobs, which will put us just above about a tenth of an amp. So barely any draw, just with the circuits drawing itself. So we'll plug that, move these around here so I got more room for the tester itself. And I'll plug that into there like that. And then power switch. We're going to turn this on so you can see these three green lights are lit the one in the center is lit we will turn on the dew strap and put that on high last time i tested the dew strap it was running at about 1.7 amps when it's set to high so you can see the blue light for that indicating that it is powered up all right so we have our five led lights plugged in you can see most of them i needed to be able to orient this whole shot so you can see the screen over here on the load tester um, dew straps up here you can see high is lit up blue so that's powered on as well we're currently at 5.1 volts running at 0.13 amps so i'm just going to start increasing this and we're going to watch the amperage number that's what we're interested in so 2.6 is where we should start seeing the port turn off we're at 1.5 right now there's 2.04 2.4345 take it up a little bit more okay so what we saw right there was the overdraw 2.68 so it's detected that and what the port is doing is cycling its power so it's shutting it down it's bringing it back up to check so this is like for a temporary a temporary type situation where there was just a temporary overdraw of power that it's detecting so it's coming back on and checking to make sure to see if it's resolved itself and if it has resolved itself then it'll come back on and it'll remain on you can see the the dew strap is still on you can see the green lights on either side are still on so it's doing its job um, again we're at 2.68 so let's back that down a little bit for when it comes back up 2.46 i'm going to use the fine controls and see how close we can get to that 2.6 right about 2.5 now a little bit more all right, so about 2.56, right? And we have tolerances to deal with. This isn't a high precision load um, by any means. I'm sure it's got its tolerances as well, but we can see as it comes back on, we're sitting at 2.56. So that's, for me, that's close enough to the 2.6 that they're talking about. Now, like I mentioned, it's cycling power. You can see the, the load tester is going on and off because the armored hub is detecting that overage of current. The next thing that it'll do as it gets closer to that three amps, then it starts thinking, all right, there's a serious problem here. I'm just going to shut the port completely off again, leaving everything else that we have plugged in over here running and uninterrupted. So I'm just going to take this all the way up, which will put me up over three amps. And you can see the screens flickering. You can see maybe the power, the blue power LED on the load tester is flickering as well. That port is effectively off. There is a little bit of current going through there. I'm assuming as it's testing to see if the overage has been corrected yet. But at this point, we're three amps, maybe a little bit over with this tester. And it has completely shut the port down. All of our lights are on. Our dew strap is still on. At this point, we could either unplug this or again, just back down the current draw that I'm pulling right now. The port detected that the fault was gone. We're back at 2.4, 2.5. And everything is up and running so this also shows that if there was a possible short in this port the same thing would happen now i thought about wiring up a usb cable and actually shorting it out to test that but you really can't see that i can't put a multimeter across the shorted circuit and expect to get any kind of a reading you know so we we wouldn't be able to visually see that the port was turned off 
but this shows us that, right? Anything over three amps, including a short, so short would be maximum load, no resistance in the circuit, it's gonna shut down. So that proves two points right there that what they claim with, with protecting the device with anything that would pull more than 2.6 amps, it's also gonna protect itself and all the devices that are plugged into it including the USB cable that would be eventually going to our computer. Everything's isolated and protected everything else just as stated. Okay, so for this part of the testing, we're going to be testing the input voltage and going into the hub. So I'm not going to be using the power supply that came with the hub. I'm going to be using my desktop power supply here so I can control the voltage that goes in and out of it. I have it set currently to 12 and a half volts DC. I just noticed on the power supply that ship with it, it says it's 12 and a half volts. It's not going to make a difference for our testing, but just to have the settings match what the power supply is. So we're at 12 and a half volts, five amps. It's currently off. I'm going to hit the output button. And just like before, I've got our three LED lights over on this side. There's one up top here. We have our dew strap here. So we'll turn that on. Put that to high just like last time we can see our current draw right now and if you look up on the load tester right now we're just using this to monitor the output voltage which is currently at 5.13 so the regulation on the input voltage of this device should keep that right around five volts regardless of the input voltage itself now they say as you start going down and again we're going to go down we're at nine and a half volts we're still at 5.12 up here so as we continue to go down, everything should be fine. We should remain at our five volts as I take the voltage down. It's only going to be when we get to four volts that it'll shut the unit down. That's four and a half. I take the half down to four. There are 4.3. You can see all the lights went off and the dew strap went off. So it knows a little bit below five volts. That's not good. It can cause erratic behavior with some equipment, possibly even damage it at a lower voltage. So let's take it back up to the 12 and a half again, and then we'll test going the other direction. 12 and a half again, we're at five volts, and they have stated that they have tested this up to 19 volts, and our five volt output was still maintained. So we're gonna get to 19 first. So we're at 19 and a half. We're still at the 5.2, call it 5.2 volts. I can go as high as 30 volts with this power supply. So we'll just go up a volt at a time and see what happens. Keeping an eye again on the indicator, the voltage indicator on the load tester. It's still doing its job and taking that 22 and a half volts right now and cranking it down to the five volts that we're looking for. So 23 is 24, 25, 27, 28, 29, we're at 30. Now I'm not gonna leave it running that long up that high. You can see that no matter the voltage, all the way up to 30 volts in this test, everything was fine. We maintained our five, our 5 volts DC on the outputs for the USB ports. Now, that doesn't mean it's okay to run this off of a power supply that's more than 12 volts. That's there just in case, you know, some of these power bricks, they all look the same. Maybe you grab one from your laptop and you plugged it in here and it's cranking out 19, 20 volts. If you inadvertently put too much voltage in there, it should be okay. But you always want to check and make sure you don't do that. It's it's not okay to run it at that high voltage like that. But you have the protection in the unit in case you do something like that. So it passed that test. Uh, so the last test that we have to do is the reverse polarity. So I'm gonna turn the output of the power supply off so we have no voltage going up to the uh, the hub itself. And then I'm just gonna simply switch my positive and negative on the power supply. So polarity is reverse. We've got positive going through the negative cable and we've got negative going through the positive cable feeding the hub. When I turn this on, I'm expecting nothing to happen. That would be reverse polarity protection. It detected that the positive and negative has been flipped and it should not allow anything to power on. So power supply is on and lights are off. We've got nothing on the dew strap. So it passed that test as well. So this unit is doing everything that they promised that it'll do. I'm really impressed with it. Glad to see that it passed all the tests, all the claims that they're making. It makes it worth the price tag for a powered USB hub. Okay, so the only thing I have left to do now is to get this installed on the rig and launch Nina and make sure everything connects. Okay, so I have the armored hub now all wired into my existing rig and it has replaced this little four port anchor USB hub that I was previously using, right? It's like I was saying, it provides no protection at all. It's just your standard desktop hub. I have absolutely everything 
tiny thick ends to this thing. So starting from this side, I've got my little GPS dongle, my main camera, my guide camera. This right here is so the Pegasus power box can talk to the computer and I can monitor that. Next one down is my auto focuser. And then the last one here goes to my mount. So I've got all six ports running. This is the USB 3 cable that goes down and is fed from PC. So it goes right down in here. And then the power is coming from my Pegasus power box as well. So it's all set. We're going to jump over to the computer, fire up Nina, and make sure everything connects. Okay, I am remoted into that rig with the armored hub on it, and we're just going to launch Nina here. And like I said, just check to see and make sure everything fires up through the hub. I expect that there will be no problems, but we always have to test anyways, right? All right, so I'm just going to light everything up all at once by hitting the little power button down here and watching our messages as we come up. Make sure we have no errors. There's the camera, the telescope, focuser, rotator guider everything's looking good i think that's it the rest of it's just going to be my weather and well there's my pegasus power box the switch so yeah everything's connected through so that was it that was our final test just to make sure everything connects through it like i said i wasn't expecting any issues with it everything looks good and um we're ready to get this thing outside and do some testing with it so as you just saw it's a permanent fixture now on my main rig i love that little box i you know again i never thought it was something that i would need never thought about protecting usb connected devices like that but um now that i'm aware of it it's going to live permanently on my big scope now so let me know what you guys think in the comments something you think you'd pick up i have an affiliate link for high point scientific if you use that i get a little bit of a kickback at no extra cost to you and just like always i want to say thank you to all my members both here on youtube and on buy me a coffee appreciate everybody's donation and your memberships appreciate everybody that leaves comments likes shares subscribes you guys are fantastic i'm having a blast with the channel as always again appreciate everybody's time i'll see you in the next video and clear skies